Hi everyone. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, welcome to the ICCS String Seminar. Uh, today we have Shivangan Tata from ICER Bhopal. We'll be talking us about Chern Simons theory, not invariance, and matrix models. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Ashokda for the invitation and uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, partly because of me, because I somehow I knew that the talk is from four. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, Jan Simon's theory, not invariance and matrix model. And roughly the plan of my talk is following. I will briefly discuss about the uh, relation between the Chan Simons theory and not invariance, mainly the work done by Witten in 1989. And then I will talk about our recent work, that is calculation of two point correlation functions in Chan Simons theory, which are related to uh, two component torus knots and links. I will discuss all these uh, things, torus knots and links every, in, in, in appropriate time. Uh, so for, uh, I will discuss the calculation of these two point correlation functions using matrix model. This work uh, we have done with our PhD student uh, Kuchal. And then we will see that when you go from two point to three point correlation function, it is, it is little difficult to apply the same technique what we have applied for two point correlation function. And then, uh, and, and so we, what we are now trying is that to deal with these three and higher point correlation functions, to calculate that three and higher point correlation functions using matrix bootstrap. I will also describe the basic idea of matrix bootstrap. And finally, if time permits, I will talk about the larger picture of this matrix model not invariance program, mainly the how matrix model can help us to understand the volume conjecture. So this is the rough outline of my talk. So let me start with some basic definitions of knots and links. So knots, you can think of some smooth embedding of S1 in some three manifolds. So these are different knots, okay? This is sometimes called unknot because they are, actually there is no knot here. So this is trefoil and so different types of other knots. Links are collection of disjoint knots, okay? So this is called half link. Okay, this is, a color, this is an unknot. This is an, uh, red one is an unknot, blue one is an unknot, and they are linked together. And in our talk, in this talk, we will mainly talk about this uh, half link, okay? So these are, these are the definitions of knots and links. Two knots or links, okay, are topologically equivalent if you can bring one knot to another knot by continuous deformation, that is without cutting any of these components, then we call these, uh, these knots uh, or links are topologically equivalent. Okay, so therefore in mathematics, different knots which are topologically equivalent, the natural question is what is the quantity what you can define for those topologically equivalent knots. And these are known as knot invariants in mathematics. And it's a challenging problem in mathematics to find knot invariants for different knots. Correlation functions in Chan Simon's theory in three manifold. I will describe these correlation functions in, in, in shortly. This correlation function turns out to be useful quantities to distinguish different inequivalent knots and links. Okay, this is the work of Witten in 1989. Okay, so therefore, these defined correlation functions you can think of some bona fide candidate for the knots and links. For the uh, uh, bona fide candidate for not invariants for different knots and links. Okay, so therefore, let me first uh, discuss 
little bit of the Chan-Simmons theory and their, uh, and, and how, how, how do you define correlation functions in Chan-Simmons theory. So this is the action, Chan-Simmons theory action. So you consider Chan-Simmons theory in any generic three manifold. This is the action, K is the level of the theory. Okay, this is the metric. Uh, so the action doesn't depend on metric. Okay, the action is topological. Okay, you can say that Chan Simon's theory is topological. It doesn't, the met, action doesn't depend on metric. You can also define some observables in this theory, and these observables are mainly the expectation value of Wilson loops. Okay, so K, 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 K is some not closed loop. Okay. And then you define this holonomy along K, and then you take trace in some arbitrary representation R. And the, so these are called Wilson loops. Okay? And the expectation values of Wilson loops are some observables in this theory. First of all, these are gauge invariant because I am taking trace. And secondly, like the action, Wilson loops also do not depend on metric. So therefore the left-hand side, the right-hand side is a topological, is topological invariant, okay? If you deform these knots, they will not change. The value of, uh, value of the, uh, these correlation functions will not change. So therefore the expectation value of these Wilson loops are bona fide candidates for the knot invariants, okay? Witten showed that if you consider the chan simons theory with a gauge group SU2, okay, and take the representation. So let me also mention that whenever we are considering some Wilson loop, there is always a representation associated with the Wilson loop, okay? So what, in, what Witten showed that if you consider chan simons theory with SU2 gauge group, Okay, and if you assign the fundamental representation with all with whatever knots you are considering in this theory, then the correlation functions will give you the Jones polynomial. Okay, instead of SU2, if you consider SUN gauge theory, but all the representations in, in all the knots are in fundamental, then you get something called home fly PT polynomial. And so on, if you consider SON, but again, all the representation is in fundamental, then you will get Kaufman polynomial, okay? In general, it is difficult to calculate the correlation functions as we have defined in the last slide, okay? In his Jones polynomial paper, we can show that one can calculate the correlation function for, uh, for some uh, <clears throat> uh, trivial knots and links can be obtained, okay, by something called surgery technique. Okay, I will, I will very briefly discuss about the surgery technique to, to tell you how to get uh, some uh, uh, co correlation functions uh, or the knot invariant for some simple knots and links. <laughs> using this technique. So let me very briefly, polynomials, okay, good. So polynomials, if you, if you, if you do it from a mathematics point of view, so you define some, some, some variable Q and these are the, the, the polynomials, Jones polynomial I'm considering, these are the polynomials of Q. When you come from Chan-Simon's theory, this Q turns out to be two pi i, e to the power two pi i by k plus n, okay? Any other question? So to tell, to uh, give you a very rough idea of this surgery technique. So let's consider, let's suppose we are considering Chan-Simon's theory. We want to write down the partition function or of Chan Simon's theory or expectation value of any Wilson loop in Chan Simon's theory on S2 cross S1. Okay. Now, how do you get S2 cross S1? You take a two-dimensional ball, okay. So which is a disk, 
you take two such discs and glue them along the boundary you will get an s2 okay now you take a disc two dimensional ball or disc whatever you say you foliate that along s1 you are going to get a solid torus now you take two solid tori okay slice them at a particular s1 that th then you will get two solid disc if you glue them along the boundary you are going to get s2 and if you do it for all the points along s2 you are going to get uh, you, all, all the points along s1 you are going to get s2 cross s1 so therefore if you take two solid tori glue them along their boundary you are going to get s2 cross s1 this step number 1 now you consider so suppose you are taking two solid tori this this and this and you consider a chansonmans theory on this solid torus one can show that in this uh, uh, jones polynomial paper we we can showed it that such the, the the partition function of such chansonmans theory corresponds to a state in the corresponding osg mina witten model living on the boundary of the solid torus which is a torus okay and that state is specified by the trivial representation so i write it as bra of zero zero stands for trivial representation on the other hand if you take a chansonmans theory in this uh, uh, in a solid torus with an wilson loop like this okay that chansonmans theory corresponds to a state in the west jumino witten model and that state is given by r and this the why this r because this wilson loop i am considering that wilson loop corresponds to the representation r so if you take such wilson loop <coughs> the corresponding state <coughs> in the boundary theory is given by this r now to get so this is this is a chansonmans theory on a solid torus this is a chansonmans theory with this wilson loop again in the solid torus now if you glue this solid torus okay you will get a chansonmans theory on s2 cross s1 which is essentially means that you have to take this inner product of zero with r so therefore this gives you the chansonmans the expectation value of wilson loop in s2 cross s1 where this wilson loop is along s1 okay and that is given by delta 0 r if you consider the partition function partition function means you again so no no loop no wilson loop corresponds to you put the r representation to be the trivial representation okay then that will give you the partition functions of chansonmans theory on s2 cross s1 which is one okay so this is how you you can take other other uh, other wilson loops also to get uh, the uh, expectation value of wilson loops uh, in s2 cross s1 but let's uh, consider this one only now so now suppose we want to understand how to get the expectation value of this wilson loop in s3 okay this one is for s2 cross s1 now let's see how do we get s3 s3 is what s3 is r3 with a point at infinity identified okay you scoop out a solid torus from s3 okay you scoop that and take that out so so you have this solid torus scooped out and then the remaining manifold okay what is that that remaining manifold if you if you if you try to th think the remaining manifold is again a solid torus okay but there is a difference what is the difference whatever with the contractible cycle of this solid torus becomes the non contractible cycle here because the contractible cycle the solid torus you have scooped out now that is the outside of the solid torus here so that becomes the non contractible cycle and the non contractible cycle in the solid torus becomes the contractible cycle so therefore there is a inversion so you have from s3 you have scooped out a solid torus okay so the remaining is also again a, a, a solid torus but they are inverse of each other okay so therefore if you take two solid tori and you give an inversion inversion transformation and then if you glue them okay you are going to get a s3 so that is the how you will get so you take this two solid tori okay and you have some wilson loop in this in this torus 
Now, before gluing them, you give an inversion, inversion transformation, okay, such that the A cycle of this torus becomes B cycle and B, and B cycle becomes A cycle. So that is taken care of by this K operator. So giving, giving this inversion course, you have some operator in the, in the Hilbert space. So that inversion transformation is taken care of by this K operator. So you first give the inversion transformation on the state R and then you glue it. So therefore you are going to get K0R, which is the expectation value of Wilson loop in S3. Okay. And the choices of K will tell you different framing you are considering to get this expectation value. Okay. So this is the basic idea of the surgery technique. And if you apply this surgery technique, K0R is non-zero for uh, uh, R not equals to zero, yes. This inversion transformation is some kind of modular transformation. Inversion transformation is some kind of modular transformation, tau goes to minus one over two. Okay. Yes. Okay. I will shortly write the form of this case and all these things. Okay, so using this technique, I am directly writing some partition functions or some uh, on, on S3 mod ZP, okay, I'm, I, I would like to consider Chansamon's theory and different knots and links in a manifold S3 mod ZP. So the partition function is given by this S0R, I will tell you what S0R is. If you consider an unknot in S3 mod ZP, the corresponding partition function or whatever, the expectation value of this Wilson loop is given by this. So the, there is a R here, this R corresponds to the representation you have associated with this R not, uh, with this R not, I'm sorry. If you take the half link, one is in the representation R1, the other one is in the representation R2, and the corresponding partition function is given by this. What is this S and P? These are basically related to your modular transformation of the character. Okay, so you can one possible choice is that K you take just S, the modular transformation. Okay, so these are the these are different S and T matrices. When I, when we will do some calculation, I will explicitly write down the form of this S and T matrices. So this is what I, I will mostly work with this expression that is the uh, invariance for the half link in S3 mod ZP. Okay. Now, so, so this is this is uh, these are the expectation expectation value of some uh, simple knots and links. What about other knots and links? Okay. So in general, it is difficult to calculate the correlation functions of any arbitrary knots and links using the surgery technique. Okay, but if you consider the representations associated with different knots and links are all fundamental representation then you can use something called skein relation, okay? Basically, that skein relation helps you to break, to unknot whatever knots you have. For example, you take this knot, this is called trefoil. Using the skein relation, I'm not writing down the skein relation. Using the skein relation, you can show that this is equals to an unknot plus a half link. Okay, so although it is difficult to get a get this kind of knot using the surgery technique, okay, but you can use skein relation to write down the uh, the invariance for this kind of knots also because using surgery technique you know what are the what is the partition function for this un, this are not and half length. But as I said, this is possible when the uh, representations associated with this knot are in fundamental representation. Well, production function will be a product, yes, yes. <clears throat> so, 
if you take some arbitrary not like this okay now if you if you consider a sphere along this junction okay so if i draw this sphere kind of this this with some crossing here okay something like this so this you can think of a chansamon's theory with some wilson lines this chansamon's theory in s3 with some wilson lines okay this is suppose this is some representation r this is some representation r so therefore the boundary is a s2 with four punctures okay the corresponding hilberts the dimension so you can write down some osgumino whittle model for this the dimension depends on the irreducible representations of r cross r okay if you take r to be fundamental that means only one box okay then it's box cross box equals to this and this so the so the hilbert space is two dimensions okay now suppose i take so this is my s2 suppose i take this kind of uh, punctures this kind of punctures okay okay and some other this kind of punctures okay so all this and 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 here i have so this whole i i have i have this not in some manifold name i have taken out this s3 from this manifold so this is what i have and then the rest of the manifold is some other manifold m of ml with some four punctures okay now this kind of puncture this correspond to a state psi1 in the in the in the osgumino witten model this corresponds to a state state psi2 in the osgumino witten model this corresponds to a state psi3 in the osgumino witten model but since your hilbert space is two dimensional so these three states must be linearly dependent okay now if you now glue this with this okay you will get this the original whatever original you had here now if you glue this with this you will get something like this and if you glue this with this you will get something like this so let me also put some arrow so this you can okay so once you have so if you have this kind of junction using this chain relation you can open it up and that is possible because this is possible for the fundamental re fundamental representation because when you have fundamental representation your hilbert space is two dimensional so therefore any three such state will be linearly dependent and using this relation you can actually i can uh, if you are interested after after the talk I, i will show you how this not breaks up into these two parts okay but if you have more if you if you have representation higher than fundamental this is exactly my next point what is the hilbert space is a conformal block conformal block hilbert space is conformal blocks of the achievement part yeah hilbert space is spanned by this conformal blocks <laughs> Call, yeah when you quantize this chan simons theory uh, in some three manifold that is mapped to this space of conformal blocks right exactly so as i said as I, as i said if the representations are other than fundamental then such this kind of uh, this kind of skein relation is not possible and you need some generalized skein relation 
Okay. So what we will show, what we will see in the large n large scale limit, actually in the double scaling limit, I will I'll define the double scaling limit shortly. It is possible to compute correlation functions of Hopfling for any arbitrary large representation R1 and R2. You give me any arbitrary large representation in the large n large scale limit, I will I can tell you how to calculate the correlation functions for the half link given any R1 and R2. And once I know the correlation function for the half link, that is R1 and R2, using that result, I can further compute correlation functions for other classes of torus knots and torus links in the large in the same limit, in the large and large scale limit. Okay. So this is the first part in the first part of my talk, I will discuss about this. Okay. So why large n? So first of all, large n is it's a very uh, 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 it's a very uh, what is called I mean uh, The scale relation. Oh, I have done it for S3 mod J3. Yeah. Yes, but yes, right, right, right. Yes. In S3 is just S R1, R2 in the uh, canonical framing. If you go to some safer framing, you will have some non trivial. Yeah. <clears throat> so, this is a very uh, popular limit for physicists. Okay. And not only that, if when you go to this large n limit, different new phenomena pops up. For example, you can see some kind of uh, phase transition. And this is precisely what we have also seen that in this limit, we see that there is a phase transition, okay, in this in these correlation functions. And from the mathematics point of view, the origin of such phase transition is not very clear. Okay, this is number one. Number two. The large n limit is interesting in the context of generalized volume conjecture, what I will discuss very briefly at the end if I get time. So now let me discuss a little bit about the uh, how to calculate half link correlation function. Okay, so as as I have shown you, this is the expression for the half link correlation function okay in s3 mod jp so now let me write down the different expressions for this uh, different quantity s and t they appear so srr is given by this where this q so we are okay first of all consider first of all we are considering un chanson theory okay so un chanson un group you can write as e1 times sun modulo Zn, okay? So this Q is the charge corresponding to E1, okay? And this phi i's, phi i's are related to the hook numbers of the given Young, Young, Young diagram representation. So any, any, any UN representation, you can write down the representations of U, SUN and, and a charge for the corresponding E1, okay? So, and the, and the representations of SUN, <coughs> you can write in terms of Young diagrams. So, LIs are the number of box in the Young diagram. And HIs, so given the number of box, you can calculate HIs. HIs are called hook numbers. So, phi is are related to the hook numbers. Okay. TRR is given by this. All other quantities are known here. The C2R is the quadratic Casimir for this representation. Okay, so C2R has this form. So this is the so this is the form of WR uh, WR1 R2 in UN Chan Simons theory in S3 mod JP. Okay. So so far I haven't taken any large n large k anything. Achha. I didn't mention one thing that is all the representations appeared here. Okay. They are called integrable representations. 
I will define wh what is integrable representation, and this follows from the fo follows from the fact that the the Weierstrass or Witten model associated with any Chandler-Mans theory in uh, in some three manifold is a rational conformal filter. Therefore, you have finite number of primaries. Okay. And each representation corresponds to a primary. So therefore, you have so these are they are not you are not summing over all possible infinite number of representations. You are summing over some finite number of representations. <clears throat> so those representations I am calling integrable representation. And mathematically, when, what do I mean by integrable? Or diagrammatically, what do I mean by integrable representation? Is the width of the Young diagram will not exceed k. K is what k is the level of my Chan-Simons theory, okay? So if you consider any, 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 any Young diagram, the width of the Young diagram, this is the width, that will not exceed K. So that is the constraint on the representation. So all the sum over representations you can see here, okay? They are summed over this integrable representations. <clears throat> so that thing, that is something you have to keep in mind when you are considering this sum. Okay, so this is what the definition of integrable representation. Okay, and if you use this relation, if you use this relation, you can uh, you can convert this in terms of the constraints on the hook numbers. Okay, so once you have this bound on the hook numbers, you can define some angular variable theta i's. Okay, such that the theta i's run between minus pi and plus pi. So if you now plug everything in, in uh, I mean, all these definitions I have given. The Hoffling partition function is basically given by, this is the sure polynomials, chi r. So this theta one, okay. So now let me little bit, bit little, uh, explain little bit. Okay, so these R1, R2s are what? These R1, R2s are the representations associated with the two knots you have in the half link. You remember half link? Half link is link of two R knots. Okay, and you have R1 representation in this R knot and R2 representation in this R knot. So these R1 and R2 are given. Okay. So using this definition, a R1 representation means a set of thetas, theta one, theta two, theta n. A R2 representation means another set of theta one, theta two, theta n. Okay, and you can you can massage this thing. You can show that this expression is therefore basically given by the Schur polynomials. Okay, for a given representation R. Okay, Schur Schur polynomial for those theta one. For, for, for those angular variables for the R1 representation, I'm calling them theta bracket one. And those set of thetas corresponding to R2 representations. Okay, and then you have a sum over R. These are the characters you can say, yes. <clears throat> okay, and A is two pi P lambda, uh, and lambda is given by N by K plus N. And our goal is to calculate this quantity using matrix model, uh, using matrix model in the limit, n, k, both going to be large, keeping this lambda, which is two coupling fixed. So this is the double scaling limit. And our goal is to calculate this quantity in this double scaling limit. Okay. So let's see how to do that. So <clears throat> there's a sum over R in this limit what happens that only a particular representation will dominate this sum okay that is the standard shuttle point uh, technique you have a sum of uh, intensifier is a sum over all possible uh, integrable representation but in this particular limit you can show that a particular representation integrable representation is going to dominate this sum and our goal is to find out that representation so suppose you have found that representation, okay? Then what? Then you calculate the right hand side on that representation, okay? Once you do that, your right hand side becomes this, okay? So 
what is a sigma one sigma two sig what is sigma one sigma two sigma one sigma two is the distribution for the representation r1 which is associated with one uh, r not in the half link and sigma two corresponding to another represent uh, another distribution corresponding to the other uh, the, the representation associated with the other r not so the sigma one sigma two are given to you okay so in the large n limit the sum is dominated by a single representation and you calculate the right hand side on the single representation and suppose the value is s sigma 1 sigma 2 okay you can show that after some calculation this s satisfies this kind of relation okay del s del a equals to this this relation if you are familiar with this hamilton jacobi equation this relation is same as similar to hamilton jacobi equation with a variable playing the role of time okay and your hamiltonian is basically given by this huh? yes, one no either you do it for by for, with respect to one or with respect to two you are going to get the same result okay that you can show one or two any 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 <clears throat> okay and people who are familiar with collective field theory this is basically the free collective field theory hamiltonian <clears throat> so how to solve it to solve this equation is equivalent to you calculate you you see you you, you, uh, you, you find to find the uh, um, solution to this hamilton jacobi equation for this sigma you you you, you for solve the hamilton's equation you, you you find out the hamilton's equations for this uh, for this given hamiltonian i will write down shortly and you solve those equations for sigma 1 with the following boundary condition it is at t equals to 0 sigma is given by sigma 1 sigma 1 corresponds to one representation one given representation at t equals to a the sigma is given by sigma two. These are two boundary conditions I am providing to find the solution of the Hamilton Jacobi equation. <clears throat> okay. So what is the what is the Hamilton's equation uh, you get from this Hamiltonian? This is the Hamilton's equation you have from this Hamiltonian. The first equation is 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 like, like continuity equation. Rho uh, sigma plays the role of density. Okay, V is the velocity. And the second one is inviscid. Uh, uh, Navier Stokes equation. <clears throat> okay. So therefore, the whole problem to find out the correlation function for, for the half link boils down to solution of an inviscid burger, inviscid fluid equation, one dimensional fluid equation with this boundary conditions. Where is the information of R1 and R2? Information of R1 and R2 are given by the boundary conditions, sigma 1 and sigma 2. Okay. Suppose this equation admits a solution which is given by sigma bar and V bar. What is sigma bar and V bar? The solution of this equation with this boundary condition. Okay, then you calculate S on this solution, calculate, sorry, calculate Hamiltonian on this solution and to get S, you have to integrate that Hamiltonian over A. So that is how I have done, that is what I have done here. So S evaluated on this solution is basically the Hamiltonian evaluated on the solution and then integrating on A. <laughs> okay, and if you plug everything, all the factors correctly, you land up with this answer for this half link correlation function for a given R1 and R2 is given by this. That is the on shell value of this collective field theory action. This is just a problem of prefermions. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Non relativistic prefermions. Exactly. <clears throat> Just to give you an example, I have taken sigma one, sigma two, that is the representations associated with the half links, some kind of square root uh, 
it has a name uh, semi circular distribution this is just to do the because in general if you give me any arbitrary sigma 1 sigma 2 one has to do it numerically but for this kind of semi circular distribution you can do it analytically suppose this is the representations i have given you okay for these two representations associated with the hop link and you can calculate that the correlation function or the or the or the or the, or the what is called uh, the uh, hop link invariant is basically given by this <clears throat> okay so this is the invariant corresponds to the hop link provided these are my representations associated with the two are nodes okay so let me be very briefly tell you how phase transition appears here okay if you remember i started with the partition function for the hop link this is sum over r and i said that in the larger limit one r one representation dominates now the question is what is given so now i have found the solution now the question is what is the dominant representation to find the dominant representation okay so what you see you have this so this you have to solve this equation to find rho as well as v v you can you, you can think of the velocity of your fluid so if you find a solution such that there is a value of time t star between 0 and a where v is 0 okay so <clears throat> so what what is the meaning of this v is zero so suppose this is your rho one so sorry, sorry sigma one and suppose this is your sigma two okay so you are starting from this 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 and this is your sigma and you are starting from this sigma one you, your fluid is evolving your sigma is changing and finally going to sigma equals to sigma two at, at t equals to a so in this process if you find you also have a corresponding velocity of the fluid in this solution if you find a value t star such that the velocity of the fluid is zero then the corresponding young diagram dominant young diagram density which i denote by rho is basically the inverse of the fluid density at that particular point t star you have a fluid with density sigma which is going from sigma 1 to sigma 2 from time 0 to a according also you have some velocity profile also associated with the fluid that is going from some value to other value if you have a value t star where the velocity of the fluid becomes zero that i call t star then you calculate the density of the fluid at that particular point t star that is that i denote by sigma star the inverse of the sigma star turns out to be the domi dominant young diagram representation the young diagram representation which dominates the sum we had to start with okay because the fluid spends most time in that region in this is this 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 happens because uh, you start with you start with some sigma 1 okay then what happens this fluid the density starts spreading so it becomes like this okay and then it contracts after some time it contracts and then finally it becomes like it goes to sigma 2 so the point it the time at which the fluid stops spreading is the t star at that point your velocity is zero maybe yes maybe yes i mean this you can show by direct calculation but physically maybe yes because the fluid spends most of the time at that maybe yes <clears throat> so no sigma 1 and sigma 2 any arbitrary distribution i am giving So R one R one corresponds to R one corresponds to 
specifying theta one, theta two, and so on, right? R R one means what? R one means hook number for the first row, hook number for the second row, and I have defined theta one with respect to this hook number. So R one means a theta thetas. Now in the large general limit, it becomes a distribution function. In the large general limit, in the large general limit, basically your boxes are like this. Okay. In the large general limit, this part becomes a continuous function. If you normalize properly, you, you will not be you will not be able to see all these zigzags. That part will become a continuous function. That is what my sigma one theta is for the R one representation. Similarly, I have sigma two theta for the R two representation. And these these things are valid for large n limit only. Okay. Okay. So now, if your fluid equation do not admit such t star, that means you started with sigma one, the fluid expand, 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 and matches with sigma two. Okay. Then you do not have any such t star where the velocity of the fluid becomes zero. Okay, then there is no such meaning of this. In that case, what happens that the dominant representation shadow point is not a real shadow point. Okay. Now, where is the where, where is the phase transition comes? So the phase transition. May appear, as I said, you start with sigma one. Now the fluid starts spreading. Okay. Now, if it so happens that it spreads, 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 and the end point touches pi on minus pi, okay, then whatever this, I mean, this, 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 this solution breaks down. Okay, it's like going from a no gap to a gap, uh, sorry, gap to a no gap solution. Your fluid starts spreading. Suppose this is your uh, black line is t equals to zero, okay? And so the fluid first starts spreading, spreading, and then at some point it stops and come back to sigma two, or even if it doesn't stop, it's going from sigma one to sigma two. But in this, in this process, when this fluid spreads, if the end point of this, because end point thetas are bounded between minus pi and plus pi. So when the fluid spread, density spread, if the spread becomes gapless, then there is a phase transition. Okay, it depends on what kind of representation sigma one, sigma two you are giving me, because this solution depends on what kind of sigma one and sigma two you are giving me. Okay, so depending on sigma one and sigma two, you can see there is a phase transition at some particular value of lambda. It may or may not be a phase transition. I mean, uh, it, uh, may, give, give, I mean, given the given the sigma one, sigma two, you may not see a phase transition, but for some other sigma one and sigma two, you might see a phase transition. Density, right? So I, I started with a gap. So my sigma one is a gap distribution. I started. I want the young diagram. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so that young diagram will have some distribution like this. Okay, but you can the interesting thing to ask is that what happens when I encounter the phase transition? So since it's an inverse, this distribution is inverse to the young diagram. So this axis is the y, this x axis is basically the y axis for the young, di young diagram. <clears throat> so the young diagram touches one. So when I have a phase transition, okay, my next phase, so this touches one, okay, and after that, my dominant young diagram will be something like this capped. When it touches this side, okay, you can think of, you can, you can roughly just rotate the, this distribution by angle pi, okay? When there is no phase transition, you have some young diagram, dominant young diagram will change in some way. But when you have a phase transition, when this point touches pi, 
the dominant in the young uh, young diagram will touch this maximum value and after that there will be a capped distribution for the young diagram so this is precisely the douglas kazakov kind of case transition people have observed in 2d young mills theory Okay, so now let me now let me talk about how do I get the other uh, other different types of uh, torus knots and links. So these are these are different examples of torus. This is a torus link. <clears throat> this is a torus knot. Okay, what do I mean by torus knot and links? These torus knots and links you can <clears throat> you can put on the surface of some. Uh, of, of a torus. Okay, so these torus knots and links they are uh, they are characterized by two integers m and m. So m corresponds to how many times the knots uh, winds the a cycle, and n corresponds to how many times it winds the b cycle. <clears throat> so one can show that these types of knots and links one can draw on a torus with some appropriate number of times it's winding the a cycle and some other, and, and 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 the b cycle. Ramadevi, Govindarajan, and Kaul, they developed a method to obtain invariance of links of this kind of torus links made from braids up to four strands. I will tell you what is four strands. So their approach is following. So you take some two unknots okay, in S3. You chop the S3 along some surface. Okay. So this is what, so this diagram, this lower block is given by this, okay? And then you apply the braid matrix on this, okay? What is the, what is the application of this braid matrix? It takes this, suppose this is R1 and this is R2, it, it exchanges this R1 and R2, it kind of the way what you do in, when you do braiding. Okay. And do and you do it to a number, even number of times. Okay. And then you glue it with the remaining manifold. Okay. As a result, what you will get, we will get this type of torus knots or torus links. So in this case, you will get torus link. Okay. <clears throat> and I call it a fourth strand because these are called strands. Okay. One, two, three, four. I have four strands. And if you do this braiding, you are going to get a two component torus link okay depending on m <coughs> this m corresponds to how many times these two torus links are uh, uh, kind of these two these two uh, these two knots are linked together okay for m equals to 1 is just a it's a, it's a, they, they, they they cross it twice M equals to one corresponds to the half link we considered so far, we considered just before this. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so for half link, which is this, okay, this you can think of this with uh, cro uh, crossing mm, twice twice. Okay, this will give you the half link. You can, you can, you can, <clears throat> you can see it clearly. This going up, going up, going down, coming back, going up, going up. So this is going up, going up, going down, or maybe you can also write going up. So this is how you can get half link by braiding. Okay, and in this case, you have to do the braiding twice. That means m equals to one. Okay. Here I am writing the braiding I am doing 2m times. So therefore, m equals to 1 will give me, give me half link. If you do <clears throat> more than 2, then you will get different kinds of torus links. Torus links, yes. So if you follow their work, the final result for such links are given by this. Okay. There is a sum over Rs this sum runs over all possible irreducible representations of R1 and R2. <clears throat> so you have some representations R1 in this, in this diagram, you can see I have some representations R1 and R2, okay? So the corresponding not invariant 
for this kind of torus knots and links are given by this. And here there are different values, I mean, different expressions for these uh, lambdas. Okay. <clears throat> This this dimension is the this is the Q dimension of the representation R S. Okay, I haven't written the expression for the Q dimension, but one can write that. Okay, and these lambdas are the eigenvalues of this red matrix. Okay, which has this expression. Which framing? This is. This is, I'm not sure about the framing here. Maybe this most likely in the canonical framing. Most likely, yeah. <clears throat> now in this expression, you separate out the R1, R2 dependent part, and you take it outside the sum. And then what is left over? I have written like this. Okay. This G, G R1, R2 is the R1, R2 dependent. It's precisely R1, R2 dependent, but I have taken it outside the sum. <clears throat> Now I go to the large n limit. So in the large n limit, R1 and R2 are given by two distributions, sigma 1 and sigma 2. So therefore, this V has two forms. The first one, the G part, okay, which is R independent part, which only depends on R1 and R2. That means which only depends on sigma 1 and sigma 2. And is the F part. The so F part corresponds to this sum. And this F part has the following form. The sum over Rs I have, we have here. Okay, I have again used those angular variables and I have written it in terms of the integration over these theta variables. <clears throat> in general, this is difficult to calculate. You can think of why can't we do a shuttle point analysis? You have to be careful because this sum is not all over all representations. This sum is over irreducible representations of R1 and R2. You can do a shuttle point analysis, but it's not guaranteed that the large and the dominant representation will be a irreducible representation. <laughs> but then what can we do? Theta is from minus phi to plus phi. That is how we have defined these angular variables. Since all the representations associated here are integrable representations, with integrable representation means we have some bound on these hook numbers and all this. So you can define these uh, angular variables. <clears throat> okay. However, in the double scaling limit, one can find the invariant for any M, okay? If you know the value of the invariance, for m equals to one, and as I said, m equals to one corresponds to half link, which we know. Okay, how? So now let's look at the f. a Let's look at f of m. Okay, this f of f of m has a property that f of m comma lambda is one comma lambda by m. Okay, and this is possible because the theta integration <clears throat> depends only on the irreducible representations of R1 and R2. Okay, it doesn't depend on M and N, M or lambda. Okay, so theta integration remains same. So therefore this F satisfies this property. Once you have that, if you know the value of F or one comma lambda, that means you calculate the uh, not invariant for the <coughs> Uh, for the uh, half link for a value lambda by m, okay, then you know the invariance for all the links you have for any arbitrary m, and that is what it is. So, this quantity is nothing but the half invariant now evaluated at lambda by m. <clears throat> okay, so this I have done it for a two strand in the sense that. Once this this one this representation is in the R1 representation, and this is in the this this link uh, this knot is in the R1 representation. The other one is the R2 representation. You can do it for so this is for link, and you can do it for uh, knot also the torus knots. In this case, you have odd number of crossing. So if you have odd number of crossing, then you have to have R1 equals to R2 because otherwise you cannot match with match with this side with the other side. Okay. So for, for odd link also, 
you can do you can do the same thing and for odd link <coughs> when when i say m equals to 1 that corresponds to r not okay and do you once you know the how invariance for the half link and if i set any r1 and r2 to be trivial i will get the value of the in the value of the invariance for the r not so in the same way if i if you consider this kind of torus knots you can calculate the value you can large n values of these torus knots large n by large n i mean this in this particular double scaling limit you can calculate those values using the knowledge of r not okay with the same argument what i have given you that is the def function has the property that m comma lambda is equals to 1 comma lambda by m with the same argument you can calculate such thing also <clears throat> okay so may i get five how, how much time i have yeah started late actually 445 oh, 440 okay fine okay so this is the story about two point correlation function okay and from we have seen that from two point correlation function we will get a class of torus knots and links in the double scaling limit now what about three point now let's see what, what we can do for three point correlation function so this is the expression for the three point correlation function okay and the trick i said this pre fermion technique or whatever you get this um, uh, um, collective field theory technique whatever i have discussed for two point correlation function it's not easy to apply such trick for three point three and higher point correlation function <clears throat> okay so calculation of this object is difficult even in the large and large scale limit <clears throat> so what can we do so recall that this quantity we have said is the character and this character you can write this is the character of uh, or better to say uh, uh, sure polynomial okay in for these variables theta n this you this sure polynomial you can write in terms of the characters of the symmetry group for a given conjugacy class c these are some technical thing but i will, uh, I, will I will try to give you the final result okay and this characters of the symmetry group you can write in this way this is some contour integration okay <clears throat> and you can take the contours about z equals to 0 let's say r equals to 1 circle radius 1 circle then the dz alpha so these dz integrations are nothing but some d theta integrations so therefore this character you can write as a matrix model because you have, you have some integration d theta 1 d theta 2 and so on okay you remember in your three point correlation function you have three such characters okay if you plug all these things then what you can show that this three point correlation function you can write as a three matrix model <clears throat> you also had a you also had a sum over represent sum over representation so what we have done here that we plugged these expressions for the characters, which gives me some integration over some three matrices and a sum over R or integration over R. We have used the shadow point values of those of the uh, for that representation and integrate uh, integrate that out. Okay, and finally we 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 are we have landed up with this expression, this three point correlation function. One can show that this can be written as a Three, three matrix model. <clears throat> have we done anything great? Actually not, because forget about three matrix model, even two matrix model is equally difficult to solve. Unlike one matrix model where you have uh, uh, some exact solutions may exist, the two matrix models are equally difficult to solve. <clears throat> so what can we do? So actually recently there is a paper where uh, by Lin, where they have solved the matrix model, multi matrix model using the bootstrap technique. Okay. So, this is a recent paper, last year's paper, or maybe this year's paper, I don't remember. <laughs> so, our goal is to solve this three point uh, correlation function, which are related to three component torus knots in S3 mod the JP 
Okay, we, can, we, are, we are currently we are trying to solve this three matrix model using the bootstrap technique, matrix bootstrap technique. Now let me tell you what is matrix boot, bootstrap technique. What is the central idea of matrix bootstrap technique? <clears throat> I will tell you the idea for a single one matrix model. Okay, just to tell you what is the idea, but central idea remains same, but the complication increases when you include more than one matrices. So what do I mean by solving a matrix model? Solving a matrix model means you find, so this is the matrix model. V is the potential, M is the matrix, <coughs> G is some coupling constants. The solving a matrix model means you find the range of this, this coupling constants G such that this, you can do these integrations. And once, once you can do this integration, in that range, you calculate what is your partition function and what is the expectation values of different trace of different powers of this matrices A. So once you know all these things, you say that, okay, I know the, I, I have solved the matrix model. So what is the central idea for this matrix model bootstrap? From this partition function, you can show that you can write a loop equation. This loop equation is like a recurrence relation all the higher point correlation functions, you can write in terms of lower point correlation functions. Okay, that is the standard loop equations in any matrix model you can write down. So therefore, if I give you some basic lower point correlation functions, then using this loop equation, you can find all the higher point uh, correlation functions. Okay. I have already used large and very good because I have used this product of trace uh, is a factor factorization. Exactly, exactly. I have already used large. This is this is this is nothing but the Sri Lanka function. Right. Thank you. So therefore, you have to specify the minimum number of correlators <clears throat> to solve this loop equation. And that space of correlation, minimum number of correlation function is known as search space. So that you have to provide, okay? <clears throat> the goal of this bootstrap technique is to find that search space, okay? How to do that? We define some matrix Tij, which is trace of m to the power i plus j, and demand that this eigenvalues of this matrix Tij must be non-negative. That is the bootstrap condition I am imposing. And from that condition, I will figure out what is my search space. So to give you an example, let us consider the famous Grossitian Wadia model. Okay. <clears throat> this is an exactly solvable model. And I have taken it so that we can check our results with the exact results. <clears throat> So in Rossiton Wadia model, you can show that the search space is basically trace of u. That is, if you provide me, if you tell me what is the value of trace u, I can find out the other higher order operators using the loop equations. And L is my coupling constant. So now I, what I do, I consider, I consider this two by two, uh, this k by k matrix Tij, trace which is trace of u to the power i plus j. And I demand that these eigenvalues are greater than equals greater than equals to zero. <clears throat> okay, in place positivity conditional name. So if you plug it in a, in, a, in in Mathematica, uh, these are the pro, these are the plots uh, uh, done by some of our PhD students who are actually working on this problem. So if you take k equals to four, that means if you take a four by four matrix and demand the positivity condition. This is the region you get. This is a y axis is trace u, x axis is L, the coupling constant. This is the region you get and the red line is the exact solution. <clears throat> you increase the value of k, you can see the region merges to the exact solution. You take k equals to nine, it almost matches. Okay, so this is how one, so once you know this search space, you can actually calculate the partition function, <clears throat> okay? In our problem, we are not interested to calculate any arbitrary higher point correlation functions of the matrices and of these three matrix model I have shown you. We are interested to calculate the partition function only. 
So in some sense, in our case, the problem is little simpler because we don't, uh, I mean, whether you can calculate the higher point correlation functions from a search base, it depends on how you choose the search base. So there are different uh, uh, technicalities. Okay, but in our case, since we are interested to calculate the free energy or the partition function, <clears throat> it, it may be possible that once we do this, uh, three, uh, use this bootstrap technique for three point uh, three matrix model, maybe one will be able to get the result for these three point correlation functions. So as of now, this is, we do not have any exact results for three point correlation functions in Chan-Simon theory. We are working on this, yes. I think it follows from the moments of this the row and their moments are positive. It, I think it follows from that. Right. I do not have any precise answer to this question, but uh, yeah, this is something related to some moments problem. So all these, if you calculate different moments of this distribution, their moments are positive. It follows from there, right? Uh, often I cannot tell you exactly what exact. Right, I understand you, it can be negative also, yes. Even it's okay, but yeah, for yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, maybe I will. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so this is uh, this is the uh, current. Uh, uh, no, I mean, this is what we are currently working on, and. Let me just very briefly tell you the larger picture, <clears throat> which is related to the volume conjecture. <clears throat> the statement of the volume conjecture is that you consider a chance Simon's theory on S3 with some gauge group SU2, okay? And consider some hyperbolic knot. By hyperbolic knot, I mean that so you take a knot in S3, okay, and then you take that knot out of the manifold. Then the remainder manifold is a hyperbolic manifold. There's a manifold with some hyperbolic structure, okay? There's some properties of this hyperbolic structure, zero to see closer and all these things. So the volume conjecture says that you take the Jones polynomial in some representation n, 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 n dimensional representation, okay? Divided by the Jones polynomial for the R naught. So this is the quantity we are considering. And if you take n goes to infinity limit, this gives me the volume of the hyperbolic manifold. The left hand side is topological, and the right hand side is also topological because the volume of the hyperbolic manifold is a topological volume. Okay. So this is for Jones polynomial SU2 gauge group. And there are different generalization of this volume conjecture. I'm not going to discuss it here. Okay, for example, one can write down the volume conjecture for SU and gauge group also. Then, then you ask the same question. If you consider the represent, if you go to this large n limit, okay, what will be the, what is the, what, what do you get? I mean, can you, can you check this volume conjecture for some known knots and links? Okay, so this is something we have a, we are, we are planning to answer or we are planning to understand this volume conjecture from this matrix model large n perspective, but that is our future goal. There is a larger picture why we are interested uh, in, in such program. <clears throat> okay, so I think uh, I have to, it's more than an hour. So I will stop here. So before I stop, the summary is we have calculated not invariance for half link and are not in the double scaling limit. We have used these results to fix knot invariance for a class of torus knots and links. We have also discussed the phase, tra phase structure of these correlation functions. In the double scaling limit, the correlation functions and the partition function exhibit a third order phase transition. 
Such phase transitions are similar to <coughs> Douglas Kajakov phase transition, one observed in QCD, two dimensional QCD. Three component torus knots and links, which are related to three point correlation functions in Chan Simon's uh, theory. Uh, we have written the such three point correlation function in, in terms of a three matrix model. Now, the question is can one use the boot mat matrix bootstrap technique to solve such matrix models? So, this is our ongoing pro progress. Uh, on, ongoing uh, this is work, work in progress. And the thing I did not discuss in this talk is the similar analysis what I have done here in this talk can be done for SPN gauge groups. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for your chat. Are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, some time means a little bit long time ago uh, with uh, Shiraz and other people. We had worked on the problem of John Simons in S2 cross S1 with matter. With matter, yes. Now there also one precisely encountered these uh, capped Cap solutions, solutions yes. and uh, the third order transitions. Right, I right, just wanted right, to. Right. So yeah, 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 and it's all related to the behavior of free fermions again. Right, this cap solution that cap you get that is precisely because of the your dominant represent. I mean, your representations are integrable representations. From there, once it touches the integrability bound, you get this cap. That is, I actually uh, with my pre PA, pre previous PhD student, we have written actually a paper and we have shown that these cap solutions are basically artifact of these integrable representations associated with the partition functions and all these things. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not very easy to write because for Two, even for two matrix model, it's a different letters you can construct from A, B, it's, really, it's, really, it's difficult, yeah. We are, we are actually trying to, what we have shown, uh, uh, Grosset and Wadia model is very easy to solve with our resource, of, because our right now our resource is mathematics. Yeah, we are trying to do it for uh, tracu square plus tracu dagger square kind of thing. But then we, so we have seen that the mathematics actually failing down. So we are trying to understand uh, Monte Carlo things, whether one can use uh, Monte Carlo technique to... So these are the students, they are uh, kind of, I, I do not have much idea about this Monte Carlo and all these things, but I think they are trying to understand. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So you got diagonal equation. Positive one. I see. Uh, maybe I will talk to you. I will need to get the ref. Yeah, maybe yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. Okay. Uh, are there any more questions? Let's thank uh, Shankar once again. Thank you.